Thank you for joining us. This is Business Incorporated coming to you live from Lagos, Nigeria. I'm Chimeze Ubi Wago. On the program today, Botswana ranks number one investment destination in Africa. That's according to latest investment index developed by research firm Quantum Global. A ratings agency Moody's warns the new regulation seeking to accelerate black ownership in South Africa's mining industry would deter investment. Plus, oil price rises in early trade for the first time in three days after U.S. crude and gasoline stockpiles fell. Let's get started now and um, look at the markets. So both the Nigerian stock market and the Johannesburg Stock Exchange are wearing the red at intraday with NSE down 1.82%. And the JSC down 0.89%. However, looking at those numbers there, Egypt was up 0.57%, while Kenya closed in the green on Wednesday. And in the Middle East, Saudi Arabia's stock market extended on the previous session's rally at intraday, headed for its highest close in 20 months as investors focused on shares likely to benefit from economic reforms and from MSCI's decision. The index was up 1.09% as some shares, which were top gainers on the previous day, continued to rally, with the only listed miner, Saudi Arabian mining, jumping surging its 10% daily limit in the first half uh, hour of the trade. Also, investors were happy that index uh, compiler MSCI placed Riyadh uh, on the watch list for an emerging market upgrade. Qatar's stock index rebounded 2.88%, snapping four sessions of declines as almost all the traded stocks rose. Vodafone Qatar was up 2.7%. Meanwhile, Abu Dhabi's index fell 0.62% as um, Ashraq Properties, the most traded stock, lost 5.8%. And Dubai was down 0.47%. And in Europe, bosses there moved lower during mid-morning deals as investors reacted to depressed oil prices and ongoing weaknesses in um, commodities-related sectors. Our politics could also be affecting sentiment as the first day of a um, two-day European Council meeting begins today. Now let's get a sense of what is driving the European market with Daniel Coop on board. Hello, Daniel. The market seems dampened today. I hope your spirit is not dampened as well. <laughs> yeah, hello, Chimmy. How are you today? Very well, thank you. <laughs> right, uh, a two-day European Council meeting kicks up today, and um, British Prime Minister Theresa May is expected to make an appearance. Will this summit be all about Brexit squabbles, or is there anything in it for the markets? Well, it's going to be a busy day for Theresa May. We are hearing that she is still in collision talks uh, with a Northern Ireland DUP party. And uh, also she is in Brussels, you mentioned it. Um, they are going to be meeting in about 30 minutes. And uh, basically this is going to be a summit of uh, most of the European leaders. They are coming together. They are mainly going to be, mainly going to be talking about European defense. Also, uh, they will be talking about uh, how to deal from now on um, again with Russia because of you know, this crisis going on uh, with Ukraine. And uh, if those sanctions uh, should be still in place or should be even uh, lifted. So so it will be very interesting uh, to see what Theresa May is going to say about Brexit because we know that those Brexit negotiations are underway uh, at the moment. So traders and investors are, of course, uh, monitoring this. Also, if there's going to be news on how much you know, Britain needs to pay because this is the biggest uncertainty probably for the British people also. Um, you know, there are those talks between 40 billion and 100 billion euros that they might have to pay. Um, so that's um, a reason uh, why we are also um, monitoring this. On the other hand, you also mentioned the oil price a little bit earlier. That's what's more uh, driving the market uh, right now. We have been pretty much all this week after starting the week kind of uh, with an up. We have been all this week kind of in this 12,700 point range here at the blue chip index uh, DAX. And most of the investors are linking this to the oil price that has been uh, dropping uh, during the last uh, days. 
some investors say it's not linked to that, and uh, some of some of them are even saying that it's maybe because of the hot weather that for that uh, the blue chip index DAX is a little bit lazy in these days. Well, I guess um, oil price seems to be driving <laughs> not just the European markets, the global markets in general. Well, still talking about Brexit. Global consulting firm Deloitte is uh, quoted as saying that um, a hard landing Brexit would most likely have big impact on German car makers. Is anyone worried in Berlin or Frankfurt about this? Well, this news is worrying, I can tell you, car makers all around uh, Europe here, because what Deloitte is basically saying is that they are predicting uh, in case there is going to be a hard Brexit, there could be up to 20% less car sales, basically, from the European Union uh, to the UK. Just here in Germany, the uh, market uh, is very, very important. Um, about every fifth car that was produced here in Germany uh, went last year to the United Kingdom. About 915,000 cars basically were sold. And here in Germany, of course, uh, there are lots of jobs that are depending on this car you know, trade between uh, Germany and the UK. About 18,000 jobs are related to this. The reason behind this is, again, the dropping pound, because uh, basically uh, what Deloitte is saying that they are predicting um, with the pound even dropping more, cars could be up to five times more expensive in the future coming from Germany, which of course is going to make uh, car sales not attractive anymore for UK citizens. While car makers are worried about Brexit, Airbus is busy sealing a whooping $40 billion deal at the Paris Air Show. Are German airlines like, like Lufthansa part of the show's deal-making party? Well, you mentioned uh, Lufthansa. Uh, they didn't really jump on new airplanes uh, at this air show. They uh, already uh, bought quite a few planes from Airbus, mostly the A350, and also uh, they ordered the new Boeing uh, 777 uh, from Boeing uh, in the last year. So no new orders from uh, Lufthansa this time, but I can tell you that Airbus was able to create an order of 326 uh, planes uh, during that fair, mostly with their new A3 20 Neo, which basically means new engine optimized, so with engines basically that need less uh, jet fuel. Uh, they were a little bit disappointed that not that many orders uh, came from inside of Europe. Most of the orders uh, came from uh, Latin America and, of course, also from Asia. Asia is this market, you know, with this booming, uh, basically, airplane interest industry, also with many, many low-cost uh, carriers. And... Um, if you compare uh, what Ace actually Airbus was able to sell when you compare this with Boeing, uh, Boeing was able to sell more planes this year. Also, um, looking at the Airbus numbers and you compare them with last year, last year there was this air show taking place in London. Uh, there, Airbus was able to sell actually 25% more planes than they were able to do this year. They're still having a big issue with their Airbus 380, their mega jumbo, um, because they're basically uh, not getting it sold anymore, even though uh, they now introduced an updated version with uh, basically sharklets on the wings that also uh, is most likely uh, going to create less uh, uh, fuel. They still don't have, you know, those orders. And uh, it's really going to a question how long the Airbus 380 production is still going to be in place. Right, Daniel. Well, we just have one more day to go for the end of a trading week. Perhaps <laughs> both of us will wrap wrap up a new deal tomorrow. Well, I'll tell you what it is in tomorrow's session. Do enjoy the rest of the day.